and you know, Tyler, as we were talking about this, I, I need to make this point. Otherwise, I'll regret not telling you this. Sure. There was another another thing that I stopped doing. And that is I stopped worrying about what my audience think about me. Mm-hmm. Instead, I started worrying bigger. I worry that when I leave the stage, I did not change my audience. I did not, I did not make a point that is going to make a difference to my audience. Which means I stop saying the things that they like to hear and I start saying things that makes them very uncomfortable. Mm. I, love that. I remember uh, two weeks ago, I delivered a speech uh, for 200 people. It's, an, it's a speech on entrepreneurship. And I got them to raise their hands and say, how many of you want success? Uh, oh, sorry, how many of you want this DVD that I'm about to give away? And they raised their hands. And then I said, okay, cool, come get it. And they were stunned. For a while and people start walking up front there were 200 people but only 30 dvds to give away and there were about uh, 30 of them that came up and they grabbed the dvd and obviously many of them did not get the dvd they were very disappointed and all of a sudden it just hit me and i said something i said do you realize something just because you raise your hand and you say you want a dvd doesn't mean you're going to get the dvd what's up everybody welcome to the bread winner podcast I am your host, Tyler Harris, and today, 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 I'm extremely excited because we have a very special guest all the way from Singapore. We've got Mr. Eric Fang, and I'm going to do a quick intro of Eric here in just a second, but uh, on a personal note, I just want to say that I met Eric. I met him at an event uh, called the Disruptive Innovation Disrupt Tour out in Huntington Beach. Uh, Eric flew in all the way from Singapore. Uh, we got to hang out in California. And I got to tell you, man, you were just one of the most genuine uh, people uh, that I've been around. And your level of expertise and professionalism from the stage w- just blew me away. I mean, it was awesome. And it was so cool. I think I mentioned to you, to you after... Um, after the event that a lot of the things that you talked about were, were literally the basis of the success that we've had with our organization, uh, which was awesome to see somebody else understand those small little things that have played such a huge role, uh, for us. But let me tell you guys a little bit about Eric and then I'll bring him on to introduce himself. Uh, but in 2013, Eric spoke for the first time in the Million Dollar Roundtable Experience, a prestigious industry conference attended by 6,000 financial service professionals from all over Asia. Eric received his first standing ovation and his career as a sales strategist also took off. He became the guy to talk to if you want to become highly sought after in your market. Today, he's a well-known personality in the financial services, real estate, and direct marketing industries in Asia, having spoken in over 20 cities in Asia to more than 50,000 salespeople. I was told this year he is also going to be speaking in Prague, is that right, in Budapest? And, uh, and man, I couldn't be more excited to have you here. I also want to talk about your book because I think it's incredible. And, uh, man, thank you for being here, Mr. Eric Fang. I know it's what, 12 hours difference there in Singapore. (laughs) Yes. It's it's 9 7 PM. And, uh, this is the highlight for my day. I'm going to, I'm going to start, I'm going to start doing business only with people that live in Singapore because I like that it's, I like that it's a perfect 12 hours. I don't have to like think about what the time change is. I'm like, Oh, it's just, yeah, it's very true. One last question I want to ask you. Yeah. Over the last few years, as you have perfected your perfected your craft, and like you said, now that it appears uh, like a natural, one hundred percent. Like when you were on stage and I saw you, I'm like, holy crap, this guy is a natural. Um, and it because it was your man. Let me just talk about this real quick. So your presentation that you gave, your keynote, it was funny. It was extremely educational, but the the entertaining and educating was so intertwined that it's like people didn't realize that they were really just sitting through a lecture. Like it was, it was, you were giving it, and you were giving an actual, like the Did format you? of it was very much of a lecture, but it was yep. so entertaining and there were jokes and the way you threw in a couple of those videos. Like I still remember that one video, which just cracked me up with the people that stood Good up, time. stood oh. up in the waiting room and <laughs> when yeah. the beep went off, that was just hilarious. I've watched it since then. I've showed it to some people, <laughs> um, but it was very, very, very natural. And so in that process of, of going from 
um, no experience and no natural abilities to now looking like a, a professional a natural. What's one thing during that process that you quit doing that you think enabled you to succeed? Cool. No one has ever asked me this question. <laughs> I, I'm gonna think about it. Okay. It can be a, I, it can be a mentality. It can be yeah. something specific. Well, I got it. I stop trying to do a good job. I start enjoying being on stage. Hmm. That's awesome. Because I'm a perfectionist, and and, sure. and I have a goal, and I, I want to make sure I do well. I create that laughter. You know, it's very technical the way I, I approach a speech. Yeah. But that, the fact that because I, I was so technical about my speech, I I squeeze all the joy out of delivering a speech. Mm. Um, and I remember, I think it was last year when I did a speech for about six thousand people. I was just sick and tired of being nervous about performing. And I, I say, you know what? Why am I torturing myself? I, I, I've done the work I need to do. Can I just play? Can I just <laughs> enjoy myself? And it was one of my best speeches because Absolutely. people yeah. say, oh my God, Eric, we could tell you enjoy being on stage. You're, you're fooling around. You, you, you do not take yourself too seriously. Uh, but it was fun seeing you like that. And, and it was fun seeing me like that as well. I was like a kid on stage. Yeah. Um, I, I still delivered the points I need to, but it was at a total different level. You so know, it's, it's funny and, and that's brilliant. Um, and, and that's what we love about the great speeches is that it's authentic. And I think that's what you're, what's basically what you're saying is I want to get up on stage and be authentic. I don't want to get up on stage and, and give a good representation yes. of, what, of what this yes. information, uh, the way this information should be conveyed. I just want to get up there and be me. And, and fun. educate people. And, yeah. and that's what people want to see. You know, the interesting, as you're talking about that, for me, I love looking at the dynamics between quote unquote real life and social media in the social media. That's, that's what you're, that's what you're doing. So you've got, let's just take Instagram, for example, your posts on Instagram are going to be professional, polished, then you got your Instagram stories. That's a little yeah. bit like, Hey, just got out of this meeting, headed to go get food. Hey, I'm in the elevator, just headed out, you know, to this conference. Hey, I'm doing this and that. And it's, it's more real. And it's almost to me, like what you're saying is you wanted to combine those two on stage to where you have the professional side, the polished side, and that's the preparation. But then you have the Instagram story side, which is the real Eric. Yeah. And, can I prepare enough to where the professional side becomes unconscious and I can just get up on stage and be the real me while conveying the message that was prepared to convey. And the result of that is everyone sitting there and they're able to receive that information from a real person because you're being real. And I think and that that's the best of both worlds. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, speaking is all about influencing, mm -hmm. but if I cannot relate to you, I would be very resistant to your influence. So when we as a speaker or a salesperson, we are authentic or we are being ourselves uh, in a way that creates a connection with your customers, they're going to be very open to your influence. Mm. And you know, Tyler, as we were talking about this, I, I need to make this point. Otherwise, I regret not telling you this. Sure. There was another, another thing that I stopped doing. And that is I stopped worrying about what my audience think about me. Mm -hmm. Instead, I started worrying bigger. I worry that when I leave the stage, I did not change my audience. I did not, I did not make a point that is going to make a difference to my audience, which means I stop saying the things that they like to hear. And I start saying things that makes them very uncomfortable. Mm. I, love that. I remember uh, two weeks ago, I delivered a speech uh, for 200 people. It's, an, it's a speech on entrepreneurship. And I got them to raise their hands and say, how many of you want success? Uh, oh, sorry, how many of you want this DVD that I'm about to give away? And they raised their hands. And then I said, okay, cool, come get it. And they were stunned for a while. And people started walking up front. There were 200 people, but only 30 DVDs to give away. And there were about uh, 30 of them that came up and they grabbed the DVD. And obviously, many of them did not get the DVD. They were very disappointed. And all of a sudden, it just hit me and I said something. I said, do you realize something? Just because you raise your hand and you say you want a DVD, it doesn't mean you're going to get the DVD. Hmm. And I, I, I say, guys, you know what? You've been raising your hands, telling people you want success. But I'll tell you what, 
just because you raise it doesn't mean you're going to get it. Mm. Faced it. Mm. This is life. Yep. And I would never have said that, but I just felt compelled because I need to get my point across. Yep. And I tell you, you could hear a pin drop. Uh, you know, you could hear a pin drop. And later on, the organizer said that, Eric, you know, that was one of the, the profound moments. And I realized that profound moments come when you make them uncomfortable. Absolutely. And a speaker who only cares about what people think about them will never put their audience in discomfort because they are so in a hurry to get the audience to fall in love with them. Yeah. That's what I stopped doing. And that's why I'm at a level that is a lot higher than where I used to be. And, I, and But because of you asking me that question, it helped me realize that. I didn't realize it until today when you asked me that question. And so anybody who's listening to this, it doesn't matter if you're a speaker, an influencer, a salesperson, you got to worry bigger. You cannot worry about what people think about you. Instead, you got to worry that when you leave, you did not leave the person in a better place. That you should worry more. Man, that was so good. That was just, that was so good. You know, that's what separates the, the good from the great, I think, um, in regards to speaking. And when you get to that level where a lot of that is being able to sense, but not just sense, but act on the energy in the room, man, I've witnessed it. I've experienced it myself to a small degree and, and hope to experience it a lot more often and in a lot greater degree. But the ability to stand on stage and to feel something leading you to go maybe astray from your outline and your PowerPoint and your, you know, main message from that day, but because the energy in the room and something you just feel like, like, for example, my coach was speaking at an event. There's about 600 people in the audience and he's talking about social media, about entrepreneurship, um, just business in general. And he said that all of a sudden he just felt very intensely that he needed to ask a question. Oh. And so he did. And so he said, Hey, let me, um, stop here for a second. Show of hands. How many of you in the room here have ever thought about killing yourself? Oh my God. And just like you said, you could hear a pin drop. Everyone's like, what? I thought we were talking about social media. I thought we were talking about building a business. <laughs> Next thing you know, almost every hand in the audience is raised. What? Then he said, okay, all right. He said, everybody put your hands down. Now, raise your hand if you've ever told anybody else that before. And there was only like five or six hands that went up. And he said, for the remainder of the talk, we're going to talk about that. And just completely did a 180 on his discussion. But resulted in probably one of the most impactful conversations that those five, 600 people had ever, had ever oh, witnessed. Wow. And, and I've done this myself before in, in a talk where I asked, what's the one thing in your life that you keep pretending isn't a problem? And the hint is whatever just popped into your brain. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so let's and so let's work on that now, because until you take care of that, then there's no reason to even move forward and talk about all the other things that I have on my outline here that we need to talk about for you to grow as an individual until you deal with that. Yep. And if you could have dealt with it already, you would have. If you could have dealt with it yourself, you would have. And so yep. let's let's actually sit here and, and figure something out that we can leave having accomplished something that really means something. But the ability to sense that energy and then act on it and know that it's going to make people uncomfortable, but to do it anyway, and because of the fact that just like what you said, that it's not really of your concern that the people in the audience like you yes. or that they think you're a great guy, that you have to worry bigger and know that when I get off this stage, will there have been a change Will I have been a catalyst for some change in that person's life or not? And that's pretty cut and dry. And that by disregarding the feelings of those people in front of you is the only way that you can get yourself to ask the right questions, to pose the right discussions, creating an uncomfortable environment to where people can get 
real, which how often do people, especially in a conference or a, um, an event type environment ever have the opportunity to get real. Precisely. Yeah. But I think the somewhat of a catch 22 in that is the majority of speakers are really just salespeople. They're really just on stage with a eloquent sales pitch of themselves and their products versus a speaker that's on stage actually trying to make an impact. And sometimes it's easier for an audience to resonate with the speaker that's just giving a sales pitch because that's what we're used to. That's, that's the common practice of, Oh, I'm going to go hear such and such speak. They're going to speak for 20 minutes. They're going to talk about their book for the remainder of the time. They're going to talk about all their courses that I can go buy at the end. The price is going to drop four different times (laughs) to this, you know, this day only. And if you use this code and for this crowd only, and for this event only, and, and this, and now we're going to cut that to $99 a month from $300 and you're getting this and you're getting that. And man, I just, I can't hardly sit through those anymore. Yep. I, 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 as soon as those right hooks come in, I, it just makes me sick to my stomach. Knowing good and well that that person was given a platform that day <laughs> that could have made a gigantic impact in even just one person's life that's sitting in that crowd and the ripple effect that that could make. But they chose to use that time for themselves. Mm. And I think that's where the the most interesting part of that dynamic is when you don't care about what the people in front of you think, you're able to say the things that show that you care more about them than even yourself. (laughs) It's like, so I'm saying like, I don't care about any of you, but by saying that and by feeling that I'm able to say the things that are going to show you that I care more about you than anything in the world. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Ronnie. Right? It's yeah, it's a guest twenty two, but I think it's it's a very interesting topic. But man, I am uh, I can't wait to get to know you better. I'm coming to Singapore for sure. We're gonna do something. We're gonna do something in Singapore. Yes, we're gonna, we we're gonna set it up. We're gonna make it yep. happen. Um, but man, tell everybody that's listening to the podcast and watching this on the vlog. Tell them where they can go um, to find you. Um, because I want to make sure they do that. We're running out of time here on this podcast. We're going to jump on a sales wolves podcast for those of you that are listening to the breadwinner podcast. Now we're going to do a, um, a a more in-depth interview on the sales wolves podcast. Um, but we didn't even get to mention your book, which I love because it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, um, it's like a coffee table book for salespeople, (laughs) right? Like yeah, if you feel something, yeah. It's and it's incredible the illustrations. Did you do those illustrations yourself? Yes, I did because I love art. So it's my way of uh, creative expression. That's awesome. But tell everybody yeah. where they can find you. That way they can uh, follow sure. you online. Well, I, I would really love to connect with every one of you who's listening to this podcast. I want to hear your thoughts about my conversation with Tyler. I want to hear your backstory as well. So um, hopefully you're on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, then you can follow me on Eric. Goals Global, E-R-I-C, Goals, G-O-E-S, Global, G-L-O-B-A-L. Look forward to connecting with all you, of you there. And you mentioned that you're going to be speaking in Budapest and what and was Prague. the other? Uh, Budapest and Prague in uh, September. Awesome. So, so, Eric, like, so Eric is going global. <laughs> uh, working on it. Working on it. It's my vision board. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, I cannot thank you enough uh, for not only being on, but for being on uh, at 9 p.m. in your Happy time, which is 9 a.m. my time. Um, but man, I've really enjoyed the conversation. Enjoyed getting to meet you in person. Uh, for those that are listening, you can you can sense the the genuineness in Eric's voice, but it's even more uh, real in person. And I think that's rare. So it's refreshing. Um, but guys with that, uh, make sure that you do check out Eric, um, on Instagram at Eric goes global. And with that, this is the breadwinner podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris, and we will see you next time.